In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use link constraints in 3ds Max. Okay, so with link constraints, you can animate linking and unlinking with objects during animation. So, say if you had a character picking up an object, you could then link the object to the character's hand, so it follows the position and rotation of the character's hand, and then unlink it, say if they dropped the object, or someone else picked up the object even. Okay, so I'm just going to demonstrate for you the problem with just a normal linking tool when you're animating. Okay, so I have a box rotating, i just move it across a bit, rotating over here and moving. So if I was to turn on auto key and at frame 20 link the little sphere to the box, you'll see that it rotates with it during the animation. And I'll just move across a little bit again. <clears throat> and now if we'll unlink it over here, you'll see that we've lost our keyframes. I have seen some people try to solve this issue by going to motion trajectories and then <clears throat> clicking and then converting the trajectory and collapsing it and then converting it from and then picking the spline and come in too, but this doesn't really help. It's not that's complicating things. So a better way of doing this is just by using link constraints. So to find link constraint, we're going to parameters under the motion tab and click transform position rotation scale and add a link constraint. Okay. Now at frame twenty we want it to be linked to our object, so add link to the box, and then we see that it'll move, and then at frame 40 we can link it to the world, and even at the start frame we can have it linked to the world. So we see now <coughs> we could then take the box off after frame 40 and move it elsewhere. and <clears throat> a sphere will not follow. Yeah, I think I stopped the sphere animation at frame 40. <clears throat> now, this can be useful for characters um, like such as this model. So here we have the knife. We have this knife and I've done a little a very naff animation on the character so far. So here we have this knife. And we want him to pick the knife up and detach it from the body. But we also want the knife to turn with the body. So if I just freeze on these, it'll make it easier to select a character. It'll make it easier to select the bone, sorry. It will kind of freeze the actual meshes for the knife too. Okay, no that I'm just freezing all these. All right, now if I find the helper, so the knife, <coughs> so the knife is being moved by a bone. So if we assign a controller to this bone, a link and shrink controller, and have a look at when. <laughs> okay, so at frame 20, the body starts to turn. So here, we want it connected to this dummy here. So add a link. And then it should turn with the body. And But first, let's have it linked to the, linked to the world, just to keep it simple. In fact, Let's not, let's not. That was moving in the way we didn't want it to. So, then at frame 30, 40, we want this to be linked to the hand. So, let's, let's add a link to this hand. So, let's see, then it pulls the 
knife out. Draws it away. Very good. Let's just unfreeze it all. So we see that a character now reaches for his knife and pulls it out. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I'm planning on doing quite a few more in, over the next few weeks. Um, <clears throat> please leave a comment and some feedback would be very helpful. Thank you.